James Gunn reveals the biggest difference between the DCU and the MCU. Welcome back to Nerdist News, I'm Dan Casey, and today we're diving deep into the world of the DCU, the upcoming DC Comics Cinematic Universe spearheaded by James Gunn. After exactly 100 years in development, The Flash is finally racing into theaters this weekend, and this long gestating multiversal movie is being seen by many as the swan song of the old DCEU. Which, you know, to say nothing of other DC projects coming out this year like Blue Beetle and Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. But what does the future actually hold for James Gunn and DC? Studios and their 10 year plan for spandex clad adventures full of gods, monsters, and debates over whether or not Superman should wear trunks. Thankfully, we have some answers courtesy of Gunn himself. Thank you so much. Gunn sat down with former Lex Luthor Michael Rosenbaum on a recent episode of the Inside of You podcast, which first came to our attention via IGN. Naturally, Gunn was peppered with questions about his seemingly Sisyphean task. How does one go about transforming a previously disjointed cinematic universe into something that both competes with and stands apart from the MCU? Well, for Gunn, one of the biggest ways to make a difference is by honoring one of comics' greatest traditions, the secret identity. According to Gunn, if you look at the MCU, there are very few traditional superheroes. There was never a guy with a secret identity until Spider-Man in the MCU. Their cap was turned into a soldier even though he wears a mask. Iron Man outed himself at the end of the first Iron Man because they don't want to deal with the whole secret identity stuff. Now that may seem like a minor detail to make these two cinematic universes feel distinct, but it does play a major role in how we as an audience experience these characters' journeys, and it creates a sense of tension between their private lives and their public personas. And it's something we'll first experience with one of comics' most hilarious examples of mass face blindness, Superman! According to Gunn, there's a bit more of a fantasy element to the DCU because there are these larger-than-life superheroes. And for me, there's Superman and Clark Kent. They're two different characters, and you have to find a way to deal with them that's as grounded as possible within this world of DC. While it's easy to laugh at the key difference between Clark Kent and Superman being a pair of glasses, there's much more to it than that. It makes for a fascinating acting challenge for whomever winds up playing the Man of Steel in Superman Legacy. If you want to see it done right, look no further than the legendary Christopher Reeves in Superman 2 The Donner Cut. Reeves' subtle mannerisms speak volumes in the scene where Lois discovers that Clark Kent is actually Superman. And Gunn also touched upon what many comic fans identified as a key difference between the big two. Traditionally, DC Comics told more archetypal stories of gods and monsters, which feels fitting given the subtitle of the DCU's Chapter 1. Gods and Monsters. Marvel, on the other hand, traditionally told more grounded stories. Its characters faced more everyday issues like Peter Parker having to figure out how to pay rent, despite saving New York City on a daily basis. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! Now, obviously, this distinction has changed over time, but just bear with us for the sake of argument here. Another way the DCU can make it feel more distinct compared to the MCU is simply due to the fact that it takes place in a world that feels more fictionalized. Major cities like New York, LA, and London exist in both universes, but DC has always had its major heroes hail from fictional analogs to real-world cities, like Metropolis, Gotham City, and Central City. And yes, Marvel's had its fair share of fictional places too, with Sokovia, Madripoor, as Asgard, etc., but part of its appeal has been the idea that it takes place in a heightened version of the real world. Gunn took things a step further, even comparing the DCU to Game of Thrones. One of the things that I love about DC that excites me about DC is that, in a way, it's another alternate history. It's Gotham City and Metropolis and Star City and Bloodhaven and all these different places in this other reality. And it makes it a little bit like Westeros in some ways. I love it in that way. I love that we get to create true world building in DC. It isn't just we're throwing some superheroes on Earth. I think that right now that's one of the key differences. And that world building will officially begin even sooner than we thought. On the podcast, Gunn revealed that the first DCU character will actually be Blue Beetle. But the first full DCU movie is Superman Legacy. And while elements of Blue Beetle will certainly carry over, the development of that film preceded Gunn's tenure as the co-CEO of DC Studios. Superman Legacy, on the other hand, which Gunn will write and direct, is the first DCU movie being built from the ground up. It's also one of the most scrutinized casting decisions on the internet in recent memory. Rumors are abounding about everyone from Nicholas Holt to David Corinsweet to three Henry Cavills in a trench coat playing the Man of Steel. And for a time, Gunn was swatting down Twitter rumors in real time, but since has chosen to ignore them, presumably for his own sanity. When asked about the casting process on the podcast, Gunn confirmed the search for Superman is well underway. Gunn said, Now that we've kind of done a lot of auditions, we're narrowing it down. We're not done yet. 
Gunn also blasted the internet rumor mill, saying there's things in there that are completely false. But I can't go out there and say, oh, this isn't true and this isn't true without going through everything. And by the way, it's not the audiences. At this point, I don't think it's the business of anyone who's screen testing for a role. That is a very private thing. Journalists have to do what they have to do. That's their job. They're trying to get hits. Yes, we're all trying to get hits, just like you're trying to get viewers, but I would respectfully disagree that it's not anyone's business who's screen testing for a role. It's a fascinating part of the process, especially for folks that are interested in the development and making of movies. It also makes for really cool looks into what might have been, especially when you see things like Kurt Russell's audition for Luke Skywalker years after the fact. Unfortunately, it looks like barring Jimmy Olsen dropping a Daily Planet exclusive, we'll have to wait just a little bit longer to find out who's actually going to be the next Man of Steel. So what do we actually know about the future of the DCU? Well, thankfully, James Gunn announced what he and co-CEO Peter Safran have been cooking up back in January. Thank you so much. In a video update, Gunn revealed the slate of films and TV shows that'll comprise the DCU's first era titled Chapter One, Gods and Monsters. Gods and Monsters. And as always, if you want to read all about it, we've got you covered over on Nerdist. The film side is comprised of five distinct projects. First up is Superman Legacy, which debuts on July 11th, 2025. The film will focus on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing, but it won't be an origin story. The film was announced alongside the cover of All-Star Superman by the dynamic duo of writer Grant Morrison and artist Frank Quitely, and that may be a clue as to its comic book inspiration. For more on that, though, check out Kyle Anderson's deep dive into the DCU's comic inspirations, which I will link to in the description below. There's also The Authority, which Gunn referred to as his passion project. Based on the Wildstorm series, The Authority follows a group of superpowered antiheroes that believe the world is broken and in dire need of saving, by any means necessary. They're basically like the Dark Mirror version of the Justice League or the Avengers and willing to be a bit more brutal in their version of justice. For more on them, check out Eric Diaz's deep dive over on Nerdist. And while Matt Reeves will keep making The Batman 2 with Robert Pattinson and The Penguin spinoff with Colin Farrell, Gunn and company are cooking up yet another Batman story with The Brave and the Bold. This movie is explicitly based on Grant Morrison's comic book stories and will feature Damian Wayne as Robin. According to Gunn, this is a story of Damian Wayne, who's Batman's actual son that he didn't know existed for the first eight to ten years of his life. He was raised as a little murderer and assassin. He's my favorite Robin. Also on the slate is Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Despite Sasha Kaye appearing as Supergirl in The Flash, this will be a brand new story based on Tom King and Bilquis Evely's comic series of the same name. Of this project, Gunn said, she's a much harsher and more f***ed up Supergirl than you've been used to thus far. Okay, sign us up. And last but not least on the film side, we have a brand new Swamp Thing movie, which will be quote, totally outside the rest of the DCU, and it'll explore the origins of one of the coolest characters in comics. So fingers crossed it's as messed up as the comic books on which it's based. Meanwhile, on the TV side, things will kick off with Creature Commandos. It's an animated series based on the little-known 1980s characters. According to a press release, Creature Commandos is a seven-episode series in which Amanda Waller creates a black ops team out of monstrous prisoners. James Gunn wrote all the episodes for the first season. The team will include Rick Flagg Sr., Nina Mazursky, Dr. Phosphorus, Eric Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, G.I. Robot, and Weasel. And yes, don't worry, Sean Gunn will play Weasel once again. And speaking of Amanda Waller, Viola Davis is returning as well in a live-action spinoff from Peacemaker and The Suicide Squad. The aptly named Waller will see her teaming up with members of the Peacemaker team in a show written by Crystal Henry and Jeremy Carver. After that, we come to another long gestating project, Lanterns. For years now, we've had rumors of a Green Lantern show in development, and sadly for Guy Gardner stands, the Greg Berlanti series seems to be no more. Rather, this one will give us a true detective-style mystery starring Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, the Green Lanterns of Earth, as they investigate a terrifying mystery. Like, why are we weak against the color yellow? Next up is Paradise Lost, a show that takes place on Wonder Woman's home of Themyscira. The series is seemingly named for Phil Jimenez and George Perez's 2002 storyline about an Amazonian civil war. And that seems fitting given Gunn's comparison to Game of Thrones and the press release saying this show focuses on the genesis and political intrigue of an island of all women. And last but not least, we come to the project that I'm most excited for, Booster Gold! It's the story of a time-traveling dipshit that uses tech from the future to help him be a superhero in the present. Basically, he goes back in time to stop crimes that he knows are going to happen and becomes a reality show star in the process. So will it have a catastrophic effect on the time stream? Will we get the same twist from 52? Only time and time travel will tell.
Anyway, folks, there you have it. That's everything you need to know about the status of the DCU, how it's going to stand apart from the MCU, and what to expect from Superman Legacy. We'll keep you posted over on Nerdist in the meantime, but for now, tell us, what do you think of this news? How do you think the DCU should stand apart from the MCU? And who do you think should play Superman? Everybody. Let us know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.